Welcome back. As tradition with this channel, we have another LED device to look at. And of course, it's a, another offering from Uline. Now this is actually a set of two for $40. I only have one of the two because I just happened to get handed it. Um, they, uh, like I said, have these for $40, or if you spend $500 on their website, you get one of these sets for free. They come in three colors, either bronze, red, or silver. This is the red one. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't tell me what the power um, output on this is. It, it does run on two, uh, three AAA batteries, or I should say three AA batteries. Uh, and it's a touch lamp, which is kind of neat. There's no actual physical switches on it, and I'll show you that in a moment. Of course, not really an exciting box because it's just your typical U-line packaging. I already put the batteries in it, so that saves that hassle. But you can see in the bottom, just uh, it's probably made for them actually, but it's probably one of these generic devices that they just slap their logo on, uh, as you can see. Um, I don't know if the camera really translates this, this or not, but this coating on here, it has like a crackle finish to it. It's kind of strange. It almost like puts me in the like mind of anodized aluminum, but you know it's plastic. But it almost looks like it was supposed to have been like a smoother finish, and somehow like the glazing cracked on it, and, and you get this kind of like shatter effect. I mean, the camera really doesn't pick it up, and you have to get kind of close to, re to see it, but it's not like a super duper nice finish. Um, the little plating on top is a nicer finish. Now this is all plastic as, as far as I can see here. Uh, there's no physical screws in this. And I, I do want to do a teardown of it because I actually have some ideas for it. Uh, up close we can get kind of a view of those LEDs in there. and They, they look like standard run-of-the-mill LEDs. They don't look like really high power ones. Again, three batteries, double A's. I have alkalines in here. Uh, actually, I lied. These are uh, extra heavy duty zinc chloride batteries. Uh, Kodak brand got these, I think, in ShopRite on sale. It's one of those, uh, just picked up a bunch of them. But at any rate, you touch the center here and it comes on. There's no brightness settings, there's just on and off. Um, it's fairly bright. I do have a lot of uh, other LED lighting in this room, so of course, that's going to pretty much swamp this out. but. If I start to kill some of these lights here, hopefully we can see, you know, it's not terribly dim. I'll shut off my two monitors in the room. They throw off a lot of light and the, uh, it, the light in the camera's off, as you can see. And that's pretty bright. I mean, it's certainly good enough to be able to read by if you were, uh, maybe sitting out on the patio or maybe you can bring it camping. Now it does say for indoor use only, but on the Uline website, they do mention, you know, taking it outdoors with you. Now I have an idea for this thing. Of course, I do want to bring this outdoors. I want to actually bring it camping with me, but I already have enough lanterns and stuff. And I thought, wouldn't it be kind of neat to turn this into a hanging light for inside the tent, since I don't have one of those. Uh, I am currently just using a lantern. And it, while it works, it, it throws the light out a little differently, more outward than downward, where this seems to go more downward. So I definitely would like to try to take advantage of that and see if we can somehow manipulate this in such a way to be able to do so. And I think I can do that. Now, I, I did have a slight poke around in here just to see if it's even worthwhile uh, modifying, and indeed it is. Um, if I take these batteries out the bottom here, you can see it actually uses a standard threaded um, rod here with uh, wires, uh, actually a, a, a hole going through it that you could run wires through. And this is what they would use in pretty much every common lamp. Um, I don't have the thread size uh, off the top of my head right now, but you know that's your standard threading. In fact, if you just give this a good twist, it starts to loosen. In fact, when you do so, you notice the top just unscrews. And it's kind of neat that this is plastic and it still responds to touch. Uh, you'll see inside here, there's a spring in the top, so that's transmitting the uh, 
touch sensibility here. It's probably through capacitance. I'm not really sure the mode of how that works, but it doesn't work anywhere else but the middle here where they have the little traditional IO symbol. So yeah, that transfers down to this middle ring. Um, I should actually pop the batteries in real quick here and just briefly show you when you touch it, it does turn on right in that ring. And I tried shorting out anything else here and it doesn't seem to do so. Uh, up close, we can see there is some, some model numbers on the board here. Uh, it does say it's ETLED-18BPT. Um, there's another code down here, RFE-002-0038-02. Um, there's a couple resistors, looks like a little transistor there, and a 4-pin chip. If I could put my super-duper glasses on here and try to get into the light, there is some text on there. Uh, I can't read it right now, my naked eye, and I don't really have a magnifying glass or anything accessible. But I will, obviously, as always, put that down in the description, hopefully, if I remember to do so when I post that it. Um, but that is the controller for the touch. In fact, now that the lights are on, you can see through the board there, that center ring has a lead that goes directly over to one of the pins on this IC. So that's what's providing the touch capability. And then on the uh, board over here, you could see that they just tacked a black and red wire for your positive and negative down, and then that just runs through the shaft down the bottom and they did give me luckily enough wire where I can pull it out a little bit and we can give this a look and uh, it goes straight down there now it doesn't come out the other side over here it just goes to the terminals so there's probably another one of these special nuts over here with the slit cut out on the side of it to allow the wires to pass through on the other side and they're probably just tacked directly on so I should uh, actually just undo this nut completely and take the rest of this apart and see. Now, they're obviously, since they're AA batteries, they're 1.5 volts each. Since they're running together in series like this, it's giving you 4.5 volts. So we can actually come up with a, another method of powering this using 4.5 volts. Um, either a battery pack that we can mount on the top up here, or um, we can actually get uh, an array of batteries, uh, either coin cell batteries, or there's a variety of different ways. We can even uh, step down the voltage using a step down converter from a larger battery source that could be used to power other things as well. And I actually just noticed um, there's no contacts on the other side of this board. It's completely one-sided, but yet if I touch right around where that ring is, there's definitely enough um, capacitance to be able to pick up my touch. So that's a pretty good um, good thing for us because we'll be able to utilize that later on. Uh, what does that leave us with? Well, there is this little plastic ring in here which kind of um, separates the bulbs out a little bit and has that, re that reflector. I don't know if it's necessary to have that or not. Um, there's this also this plastic piece. Now, all that could be useful in the final product. We'll see if that's the case. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and completely disassemble the rest of this. I'm assuming it's just going to twist out. Not 100% sure yet, but we'll see. I might need to put a pair of pliers in here and hold on to this. All I did was take the nut off the bottom here, and this actually came off pretty easily. So we can see it's just simply soldered on, like I said. In fact, we can just reuse this. Uh, and here's the shaft that goes down, and there is one of those split washers at the end. And this should just unscrew out. We can see, again, there's that split washer. Wires just run right through that. The rest of this just unscrews as well. And should come out. Good thing they did provide nice long wires. That's uh, a good sign, again, because it gives us more wire to work with later and uh, makes this easier to work on. The best thing I should do actually right now would actually just be to heat up my soldering iron and desolder this from the board here and desolder these pieces here. And it, I can actually pull this apart a lot easier that way. Well, let's take a look and see what we got here. We have a cone piece, which was the body of the light. The base, which gives us the battery compartment. 
Um, it has a lid, of course. And if you look, this was actually meant for something else too. There's a spot over here where a switch could have went or something because there's a hole down the bottom here and spots for two screws. Then we also have the touch top, as I mentioned before. Here's the actual module up close. So again, we have the circuit board side, the light side, just two wires coming out. Here's the reflector piece. So this um, just went on. Let me get these wires out of the way. I'll, I'll pull these through to the back for now. And I'll show you how this mounts on the front. This just sits over. So it allows the light to come out like that. And then this piece in the front would slip over like that. And uh, using short rod here, long rod, um, it actually went some, something similar to this and allowed the wire to pass through, go down the end of the rod. This one in the end with the nut right here. So what I'm thinking of doing is, since this all kind of works together, is I'm probably going to take this long rod and thread this through. Perhaps modify this or maybe cut the rod, put this piece at the end with this on top. Just something to kind of protect this here. Um, I could put a hook at the top, so hang this from the top of the tent. Most tents have a little loop at the top to hang something from. Again, I want to try to get this as close to the top as possible, but all that light would shut, uh, shine down. But I think if I manage to put uh, some kind of a washer or something at the top here to couple this ring to this rod, I should be able to just touch this rod here and have it actually trigger the light. And that's the idea of um, that I had in my head here. Now, where can I put the batteries? Well, if I leave the rod this long, I can actually put one battery like here and the next one and around. So they kind of go uh, axial, I guess you could say, around the shaft here, kind of, kind of like this. Uh, I don't really have a, a pretty way of doing that, so they'll probably just be wrapped in, ta in tape there. But that would work, you know. It's probably the most slim way of doing it. it keeps the actual mass towards the center and it will probably also stabilize it um, the other way I was thinking was is actually put them along the outside edges like this but again I don't really have a pretty way of doing that um, and also right now to do it that way it would just sit on the board uh, if I had a way of um, tacking batteries with like a battery tacker or something like that I could actually make tabs and bend them and that would work but I don't really have that and that's kind of a sketchy process the other thing I was thinking of was somehow using this battery box again, maybe putting that on top. And um, instead of where these little rubber feet are, I could put some kind of hooks there and using three chains or something like that, come up with a center point in the middle and hang it like that. Um, I'm not worried about this being too deep because in my tent, this is actually just the right size. In fact, I just pushed, pushed the purchase button on a uh, 10 by 10 screened in uh, canopy. And I think that has a way to hang something in the middle too. So this may be useful for that as well. And that's kind of high up in the middle. You don't have to really worry about headroom. So to get to the actual next step here would be to just try to connect this somehow. Just do a quick mock up here um, with this uh, nut and see if I can actually couple the center ring to the shaft and use that to touch activate this uh, light. Uh, and the other thing I'll do too is just you know hook up the battery of course. So let me cut to the chase, get that all taken care of. And now we have the moment of truth. Will the light turn on when I touch the shaft? Sure does. And what's nice is since it doesn't have the cone underneath it, it kind of focuses the light nicer. In fact, I could touch both sides of it and it turns on equally. That's really cool. Uh, I know this is just a quick mock-up and I just wanted to get some kind of 
tension on the back end over here, but I actually started looking around a little bit more. I can actually put the top back on this if I actually put this nut on the other side because this just simply threads in. So I could use this to create tension. Um, it was just a matter of where do I put the batteries. So if I can actually engineer another way to do that. Now it doesn't have to be these big batteries. It could be smaller ones that I could actually just use for a short time or just, you know, for a couple nights. After all, I only go for two nights at a time, so I don't need it to last for a week. So using a couple watch batteries or something like that may be feasible. I'm not sure what the longevity is. But anyway, this is kind of just uh, scratching the surface, I guess you could say, of this project. Uh, I just wanted to see, see if this is going to be conceptually a thing I can actually do, and it does seem like it is. So now the next step is going to be is to play around this a little bit more, get some tools out that I can use to manipulate some of the plastic and or metal parts a little bit better, and come up with a solid game plan. So stay tuned for the next step in that series. With that, I want to thank you guys for watching, and as always, see you next video.